Star and Star interviews with your host, Star Madrigal. Today we have with us Alani Latang, a news anchor from KSBW. Alani Latang has worked with KSBW Action News 8 since 2019. Before that, she was a multimedia journalist in Michigan, where she also attended college, where she earned a BA in communications and graduated cum laude. Welcome, Alani Latang. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's such a Thanks. nice introduction. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be answering you a few questions to be exact 13. Okay. So the first question is, what is a news anchor and what do they do? What kind of anchor are you? That's an interesting question. So um, I am a news anchor and I work for a local TV station. So we focus on local news, a little bit of national, a little bit of statewide news. Uh, and what we do is we're journalists. We're essentially everyone in the newsroom is a journalist. And so what an anchor does is an anchor sort of, I guess, carries the newscast, speaks throughout the whole newscast. So the newscast will open and you'll see the anchor at the desk. Um, you'll also see a meteorologist that'll do the weather. You might see reporters out in the field going live. You might see reporters join you in studio, but the anchor will be the one or anchors, there might be two, that will carry the whole show that will talk throughout your entire um, newscast from finish to end again with the other additional meteorologists, reporters within that newscast. And so that's what we, that's what we do. Um, you know, the hours are, they range, all sorts of hours. I'm a weekend morning anchor, so I get in about 5.30. I'll look over all the scripts I'll read for that newscast. I'll make tweaks and adjustments so that they're in my voice and I'm comfortable saying them. I'll throw in pronouncers so I know how to say the right word for a city or a certain place. And I'll anchor a two hour news show by myself. I'm the only anchor. I have a meteorologist, Gina. She's amazing. We have so much fun on the show. I also, um, we have a live reporter. She's in DC. So what our company does is we have um, the opportunity to get some national coverage all the way over in DC that we can pick up and they'll um, go live for us here. And so after, um, and that's sort of typically more in the beginning of the show around like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I actually, we specifically hit her at seven ten is when we hit her live shot. And so after I finish anchoring the show, um, I'm also a reporter, so I'll go out and I'll do a story. And that pretty much wraps up my day on the weekends. And then during the week, I just report. And so um, Monday through Friday, I'll get in about 9.30. We have our morning meeting call and I'll go out and I'll do a story for the day. Then I'll probably go live at five and six. So I do a little bit of both. I do a little bit of anchoring, a little bit of reporting, but um, yeah, mainly what the anchors do, <laughs> going back to your question, this is a long-winded answer. Anchors will carry the whole newscast. <laughs> How long do you spend in the new studio? What does a daily sc schedule look like? Sure, okay, so in the, in the studio, I would say uh, on the weekends, I spend about two hours in, in the studio, but at the station, I think I would spend, I spend most of my time there, oh, I would say maybe about five hours um, before I head out for a story. So I would start my day, um, a normal day, let's say on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday during the week when I'm not anchoring, we'll have a morning meeting call at 9.30. Everyone has the opportunity to send in story ideas that they would like to cover for the day. And we talk about it, we discuss, we say, okay, that makes TV, it doesn't make TV. Right now, the big thing is explaining anything that has to do with COVID or reopening or schools and making sure that our viewers are up to date on the latest on that. And then I'll start seeing who I need to interview. So if it's a COVID story, I might need to interview a doctor or I might need to interview a business owner. And so then I'll make the calls, try to set up the interviews, whether that's in person, we still do in person, six feet distance, or we do it over Zoom. And so once those interviews are done, I will um, listen back to the interviews, pick out the sound bites that I want. Sound bites just means I'll pick out the, the sections of what that person is saying that I want them to say in my story. And I'll put that all together. Then I'll work with my photographer and he or she will um, put the story together, edit the story down and send it off to the newscast. And we will go live with that story or the story will run 
and um, and and now it's pretty much the end of the day um, for me on a normal day. How does a person become a news anchor? What kind of schooling, training? Hard work, a lot of hard work. Hard work and perseverance gets you to be a journalist. You know, um, it took me after I finished grad school. It took me a year to to land a job. I mean, I could show you a spreadsheet that I had applied to probably over a hundred jobs across the country. I didn't care where I was going. I just wanted that first journalist job. I was so hungry to be um, to be a journalist. And so hard work and perseverance. But when it comes to schooling, a bachelor's degree um, at a school that is gonna teach you about the type of journalism you want. So if you want to do broadcast journalism, you find a school that, that specializes in broadcast journalism that might have a, their own studio even at the, at the university where it gives students an opportun opportunity to put on their own newscast. And those are, those are a lot of fun. Um, and that, that pretty much will, that, 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 that can cover most of the basis. Um, but while you're in school too, another thing to do is get internships. Um, when I first started, uh, I went to school not knowing what I wanted to do. I knew I was gonna run track and that was pretty much it. And I was like, okay, I'll dip into communications. Then I had an internship at my uh, university's PR station. That didn't work for me. I was falling asleep at my desk. I was not gonna be a desk person. <laughs> then my next internship was a radio station. And I had a lot of fun at the radio station. It was a lot more lackadaisical. It, it was just, it was, it, we had a lot of fun. And then I had my final internship at a TV station and I did it in the investigative unit for uh, Fox 2 Detroit. So pretty big station, pretty big market out there in Detroit, a lot of news to cover. Um, this is in Michigan again. <laughs> so, and he, um, and the reporter that I was working with, he ended up being my mentor. Ironically, he's from California. And so we kind of did like a little swap there. He stayed in Michigan. I went to, to California. Um, so building up mentors helps a lot too um, when it comes to journalism, just because you can get people that have sort of been in the game and they can sort of guide you to um, what next steps would be after college, while you're in college. And so I would say school and, and hard work gets you, to, gets you to be a journalist. How many interviews have you done? What has been your favorite segment so far? It's funny you asked me that. And I, and I, I was looking at the question. And I was like, oh, my gosh, at this point, it's got to be thousands. <laughs> and so I guess I can average it out for you. So if I do about three interviews a day for five days a week and there's 52 weeks, I, that averages, um, not too much math, that's about 780, so 780 a year. But that's like maybe one day I have one interview. Um, another day I might have five interviews. For example, over the summer when we were covering some of the protests that were happening, um, we could get up to five or six interviews within the first 10 minutes of being there. Um, and so it, it just varies. I would say that I've done thousands of interviews. I'm not at Oprah's level yet, but <laughs> thousands of interviews. My favorite segment uh, so far, oh, that's a tough one because I really get, you can really get invested in, in some of these segments. But I would have to say my favorite segment here was probably one I did in Seaside. Um, sort of talking about their gentrification. And so pretty much in a nutshell, what that means is longtime residents of Seaside, mainly those of color, feeling like they're getting pushed out, feeling like some of the housing that's coming in isn't affordable for them, isn't um, something that supports them. And so stories like that where I can, I can talk to people, get sort of their feelings and see sort of why it was like that. Before I did that story, I read a book that someone had already written about Seaside, a history book. And so just to do just to do a little bit of research before I get to an interview, I also like to do that as well. So that was probably one of my favorite pieces because I got to talk to some of the elders in Seaside and just, they gave me a snapshot of, this is what it looked like um, when Fort Ord was bustling before 1994 when it closed. And this is sort of how it is now. And so you get that perspective from someone that's lived there for so long and to see how that is. And so you put that on air and it just gives people this just snapshot of like, oh man, this something's happening here. And so I really love stories where people come to me and they give me some ideas because we can't be in every corner of our community. So I really appreciate those that come to us 
with issues or with problems or even with a good story that they that they want to get out there. But that uh, to me has been one of my favorite stories. What's your favorite part about being a news anchor? Oh, talking to people. It's the best. Talking to people is so fun. Getting to talk to different people in different sectors. Like I've been on a fireboat before. I've been in a submarine before here. And just talking to people that are not like you, talking to people that are different. Um, I have a lot of fun talking to kids. I have a lot of fun talking to kids that are special needs. Um, I did a story with, uh, with a girl and her mom about some of the some of the 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 struggles they were doing with distance learning um and the and the additional needs that her daughter had and so but she was just so bubbly and so full of life and so it just makes sometimes a hard situation nice um in that instance but talking to people is my favorite part of the job and learning different things that are outside of journalism have you has there ever been any injuries when going live? For example, if we were are live at a scene, has anything happened to an anchor? You know, um, there are times when the anchors have to go out and field report, and we try our best to um, to have each other's back. And what I mean by that is if the anchor is obviously facing the camera, you're looking to the back of the photographer that's facing you. So you try to have each other's back. I have personally have not gotten injured. I do know of friends who've gotten injured, for example, over the summer, again, with the, with the protest, uh, she was in a city, I think she was in Denver covering a story and she got tear gassed and when it gets in your eyes, that that's really uncomfortable. You need something like milk or something um, to sort of to to soothe that out. But um, there's been other injuries I know of people. I mean, possibly um, sometimes falling or sometimes like within like the environment they're getting injured. Um, but I personally haven't gotten injured. But we try our best not to get injured. I know. Um, you know, driving in cars, too, you have to be careful with that as well. So all of that we're, we're not immune to. So we just try to be careful. How are you alerted about breaking news? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. A couple different ways. So in the newsroom, we have, I think it's three, three scanners. They're police scanners. And we listen to those. Um, and we listen to, to what's happening. So we hear a fire. We hear additional backup. We are like, okay, let's let's go ahead and check that out. And so we're the scanners are constantly on. So it's it's kind of a trick that when you sit in the newsroom, you're you're focused on your work, but one ear has to still be listening to the scanners to make sure nothing's um, happening. And then we also get uh, breaking news by people calling us, people emailing us, um, police stations calling us, emailing us, um, and then just looking, you know. Facebook, Twitter, seeing what's happening around around our area. What is the biggest piece of advice for an aspiring anchor or journalist? I would say never give up. Absolutely never give up. And always, um, always just try your best. You know, know that every day can't be perfect. And know that you're enough. You got to that job because you are enough. I might have a TV coach and she she drills that into my head and I, I would love to pass that information on to you guys. Just to know that um, someone believes in you to get you to that step. You're gonna mess up on the way. We're all gonna make mistakes, we're human. But just don't give up. Um, and just always and always fight for, fight for what's right. You know, tr strive, for, strive for to be ethical. You don't always have to be first, but if, if you're right, it's, it's better <laughs> than if you're first. What is the hardest part of the job? I think the hardest part of the job, I know for me, is you can get um, you can get pretty connected to some of your to some of your sources and to some of the people um, that you talk with. And sometimes, you know, it, it's hard to break away from that. And so you sometimes you have to bring in a manager and say, hey, can you can you help me sort of rewrite this piece? That way we're, we're talking objectively here. Um, and that way we're not taking sides. And so sometimes um, that that can be a challenge too, is if you if for example, if you have a bill, you have Republicans on feeling one side, Democrats feeling another side, you need to get both sides. And so sometimes it's hard to get just that, um, 
that one side, but also um, in journalism, just sort of detaching yourself from the story too is is also is also um, a good um, is probably some sometimes the harder advice. I know over the summer with all with the Black Lives Matter movement and with all of that, I am a journalist and I am black, and so as much as I wanted to separate myself from it, um, you know, my boss did take me aside. She goes, you know, you're very much part of the story, and so just just think about that, act about that. You know, what you're sharing is your experience is your experience, but don't generalize it for everybody. Um, and so, you know, I guess the hard part sometimes is pulling yourself away from a story that you might really like. Are there ever bloopers that happen that don't make it to the news? Oh, if you only knew. Um, <laughs> if you only knew the bloopers <laughs> that are probably out of me. There's one time I think I went on air and I said, thank you at the end. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but um, oh, there are so many bloopers that 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 don't make it on air. There's, um, uh, for example, if something is pre-recorded, the, the many takes that sometimes it takes to get that one good hit that you like where you're not stumbling or you're not um, choking over your words, but there's there's so many bloopers. I think I have, there's a blooper, um, I think of me one time when I think someone like snuck up behind me before I was going live and like that was rolling and so <laughs> it didn't make it on air, but, but the camera was rolling. So it, it lives somewhere mm -hmm. in, in the archives. <laughs> the advice for our students and community, do you have any summer safety tips for us? Yeah, really, um, you know, we're still in a pandemic and that's something to still be seriously taken. Lives are being lost. Businesses are closing down. Everyone's really hurting. Um, I guess my advice is just patience and, and just be as safe as you can. I, I know we all want to get back to a level of normalcy and I understand that. Everyone has the different reason for why they want to get back. And I would just say patience you know, we've been in this for a year. I know it seems like it's forever. It's not gonna be forever. We've made some good progress with the vaccine. Um, and I would just say, be safe and, you know, just just wait your turn. And again, back to uh, being ethical and being honest, you know, really wait your turn when it is time for people to get vaccinated or for um, for anything else. Cause you just wanna be, just to make sure that we're moving in the, the right direction. Well, thank you for letting us interview you. Oh, okay, great. That was such great questions. <laughs> shine bright, shine.